In the first unit of the class, we talked about how neurons fire action potentials, how they're electrically active. Um, a neuron is not as reliable as a transistor. Um, and people debate and wonder about whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, I feel like I have a very rich sensory experience. Is that because I've got a bunch of sloppy neurons, or would I have an even better sensory experience if my neurons were more reliable? Is if you give the same exact stimulus to a sensory neuron two times, one time you might get this pattern of responses, the next time you might get that pattern of responses. Um, there's maybe some common features that occur with some um, regularity across multiple uh, um, uh, demonstrations, and that's how we can perceive anything. I think the problem became even more amazing or more dramatic when we talked about kind of cognitive level processing um, in language, um, where not only are our sensors sort of sloppy, but also our um, our stimuli are sloppy. There's, um, there's phonemes that change depending on the context, um, and yet we're able to make sense of it. Um, I don't think the only theme of this whole course is sloppiness. Um, there's a lot of reliability and a lot of um, really cool things that brains are able to accomplish. But one thing that amazes me is how much we're able to do given all the noise in our world and all the noise in our sensors. Um, where does it all come together, right? So when I... Um, see this object and it moves in the air, I have a perception of its location, I have a perception of its movement, I have predictions about where it's going to be, I connect that up with my arms, I make my arms catch it, it all kind of works out and I can catch the thing, usually on a good day. Um, but yet I also, I don't perceive a laser pointer somewhere in the universe and a moving thing like this, I perceive a moving laser pointer. And yet we know in my brain, the laser pointer identification is happening over here, and the, and the, and the, and the wear and movement and how to interact with it is happening over here. And yet I perceive those as constant. So does, that, does there need to be somewhere in my brain that that, can, that, that comes together? Kind of a big open question. And also relating back to synaptic transmission and LTP, this reorganization. And then brought these ideas of, um, of sensory processing and sensory organization into the realm of information theory and including Bayesian probabilities, prior knowledge, and how prior knowledge affects our perception. And then in the last unit, we talked about motor systems, and again, related that to, um, to reorganization and changes. There are three questions that I think are interesting um, to consider. Um, one is, how does this sloppiness relate to our awareness and experience? Um, question number two would be right over here. Um, does the location and object identification information need to come together? Does there need to be a single place in the brain where those things are processed simultaneously? Or can I, is it possible for me to perceive a laser pointer in this location when the location is in my parietal lobe and the laser pointer is in my temporal lobe? Um, and then the last question um, is, um, is how does the capacity for reorganization affect um, or relate to this awareness and experience. So each of those questions could be an entire semester. Um, for the next 10 minutes, um, I'd just like uh, the, uh, everyone to get into groups and pick one of those questions, actually we'll say seven minutes, um, and just um, pick one of those questions and brainstorm some ideas. 
Interesting. So we have so so maybe maybe our perceptions are a little perf uh, imperfect, but that comes with an advantage of being able to um, to have uh, again sort of this richer capacity to interact with it. Um, so in what so impactful? In what is that like that? It's going to change your brain when you have experiences. Um, part of that kind of echoes um, uh, what uh, what in one of the videos I linked to before Daniel Wolpert's TED talk about movement. Um, uh, he's sort of movement centric and thinks that the purpose of all things that your brain does is to move is to help you with toward movement and your brain is really just using Bayes theorem over and over again to classify things and then make decisions about what kind of movements you need to make so cool yeah thanks that was a fun discussion for me hopefully you all enjoyed it